Welcome to an Illustrator vector tutorial for creating a vector badge. I'm using Illustrator CS4. And my name is Matt. We're going to go ahead and get started. As you can guess, we're going to create a badge just like this here. And uh, to get started, I'm going to copy this over so we can have a reference. Uh, we're going to create a new document. You can use your default setting, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and give mine a name. Um, you're going to want to set up some guides and also make sure uh, your ruler is showing so you can set these guides up. Um, I like to just kind of center it anyways in the document. You don't have to. I like to work in inches because I work with print a lot. But we've ordered, we're going to set this at four and one quarter because it's eight and a half inches long and this is 11, 10 and a half. So we're going to go five and one quarter, which should be about right here. The reason we're doing that is we're going to design everything around this center point here and to have an intersection point with guides is just pretty easy because you can turn your guides on and off, which I like. So to get started, let's paste this in for reference. And we're going to get started with creating um, the circle and the other elements and then we'll add the gradients and effects to it later to give it a little bit extra depth. So we're gonna grab our a lasso, or not a lasso. I pray I pray say that because it's a Photoshop shortcut, but shortcut L um, for your ellipse tool. We're gonna click in the center while holding the Alt key to constrain it to that point in the middle, and then hold Shift to make it match. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and apply a medium gray, and we're gonna copy this object and place it right in front so that we can then just scale it down just like this. No, it didn't work. There we go, scale down just like that. We're going to shift this to stroke, and press X to make the stroke in the front if it's not in the front. And we're going to select this yellow color, go down to your strokes palette, go to five points, we're going to copy this and again control F, paste it in the front of this and scale down while holding Alt and Shift and shrink the weight down to 1.75 or whatever else you think would look good. Just some minor tweaking. Does it look a little bit a little far? It doesn't have to be exactly, but just to roughly create it how we want. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is create the star in the middle. And to do that, we're going to again create it by selecting the center. If your snap snap to uh, guides is not turned on, you're going to go up to your view menu, and the, or I guess snap to point will do it as well. Um, and using the star tool, we're going to select and drag out from the middle, constrain to the top point. And here's a cool shortcut. Alt will constrain it to a default predefined star for you. Um, you can adjust the star to have longer edges, shorter edges, by pressing and holding control while you are dragging out the star tool. We're going to remain with this one here just because it's predefined. And we want it probably roughly about right there just because we don't want it quite to the edge, but almost near enough. Um, Okay, and we're going to set it to a darker black. Just be. And we'll go down to 10 or 8. Just like that. And again, this is not quite as dark as I was hoping. Okay, so now that we have the star created, what we're going to do is we're going to type in our text. Um, we're going to start with greatest. Nice click. I do it out here because if you click down here, you might actually turn it into a path text, and you don't want that. Control Enter. We'll accept that, and we're going to do it again. And we're going to type superhero. All caps, and then press Control Enter to accept that. The font that I'm using here is called Dino, Dinova, I think is what it's called, black, 
and I've set it to be scaled in the y direction 125% and increased the lighting to 20 which you can do shortcut alt left and right arrow keys to increase that this is using let's see how long did I use Century Gothic so we're gonna click Century Gothic that ribbon which we're gonna grab the square tool let me just click and drag it out and about right there seems pretty good now I'm gonna press control X to remove this because I want it placed behind this and just press control B and that'll place it right behind it I like using those shortcuts a lot for layering and easily uh, moving things around in inside of Illustrator. Next thing we gotta do is just scale this up to about roughly the right size, which is about right there. And same thing that with this, but we do want to make a few more adjustments, which is increasing the leading to about 160 and then creating a larger font size, I think it's at 16. And we're also going to make it a bold font. Old, just like that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is bring this down. Whoops. Okay. Now we want to bring this down. There's a few hairs here just to give it a little bit of perception. And we're probably going to drop this right down to the line that the arrow makes, for, or not the arrow, the star makes right there. Okay, once we've got that, we're now going to add the since 1950, and that's actually made, and that is Century Gothic as well. I didn't think they were both And change this down to a regular font. And this is font size 8. And we're going to adjust the lighting on the date. Quite a bit wider. And it's not so much. Enter will accept that with fonts, which is nice because sometimes I find it hard to get out of that tool. All right, there we go. Uh, next thing we need to add is the starburst, which is pretty easy because you're going to use your star tool. Click in the center, draw this out. Now, with this tool still selected, I can press the up and down arrow keys to add in points. So I'm just going to click and drag till I get a decent amount, not too much because I don't want it to be crazy. And then uh, I need to extend the points from the center, which I do by holding control down. And click and release. Uh, it's not weighted right, so I'm going to press control X to cut that from the scene. I'm going to select the back layer, which is the gray circle, and press control F, which will paste it right in front, but also behind the star. And then we're just going to set a light color for now, because we will come back afterwards and add in the gradient effects. Uh, next thing we need to do is add these stars here, so we're just going to click and drag because that star actually falls for the point here. Bring back down to 5. And just hold down the Alt key and scale this up to about right there. White yellow and just bring it down until it nearly mimics the tip. There we go. Scale out and that does look to be a little big. And draw attention away while using well, you just use a shift key there we go to scale this down appropriately it's right there and it's still a little too big okay and we're going to duplicate this by holding on the alt key and dragging out to the side and then shrieking this down to about right there using the mirror tool which is shortcut O we're going to select that as its anchor point click and drag 